And here is the Writer's Almanac for Thursday. It's December the 19th, 2019. It was on this day, 1843, Charles Dickens' story, A Christmas Carol, was published. He had written the book in six weeks. He needed the money. He had a large mortgage payment. His parents and siblings were begging for money. His wife was expecting their fifth child. And the sales of his most recent novel, Martin Chuzzlewit, were disappointing. So he rushed through A Christmas Carol in time to get it printed up for the holiday season. He decided to publish it himself, and he designed the book to have a gold-stamped cover, woodcuts, four hand-colored etchings, a fancy binding, gilt-edged pages, title pages in red and green, hand-colored green end papers. He decided the green wasn't bright enough, so he did the end papers in red and blue instead. It went on sale on December the 19th. It cost five shillings. It was a big bestseller. First edition, 6,000 copies sold out by Christmas Eve. But he had priced the book too low for such a handsome edition. And so he made much less from that first run than he expected to, just about 200 pounds. He was hoping for a 1,000 It's the birthday of Edith Piaf, born in Paris, 1915. Her mother was a cafe singer. Her father was a street performer, acrobat, contortionist. As a girl, she was sent to her grandmother's brothel, where she was raised by prostitutes. She became an international singing star with songs like La Vie en Rose and and Non Je Ne Regrette Rien died at the age of 47. 40,000 mourners joined her funeral procession in Paris. It's the birthday of Maria Sandford, born in Saybrook, Connecticut, 1836. She became one of the first female college professors in the country. She was the first woman to deliver a commencement speech at a university. She taught at the University of Minnesota, where on her 80th birthday, someone gave a speech that described her as vehement and gusty, leonine, hale, and lusty. Here's a poem for today by Paul Hostovsky, The Calculus. My hygienist likes to include me in the decision-making. Shall we use the hand scaler or the ultrasonic today, she asks me. I like the way she says we, like we're doing something intimate and collaborative, like building a snowman, or more like dismantling one after an ice storm flake by frozen flake. The calculus is caused by precipitation of minerals from your saliva, she explains. You can't remove it with your toothbrush. Only a professional can do that. She's very professional. She doesn't dumb it down. Pay more attention to the lingual side of your mandibular anteriors, she says. I love it when she talks like that. I love the names of teeth, incisor, third molar, bicuspid, eye tooth. Her own teeth are virtuosic. Calculus comes from the Greek for stone, she says. In mathematics, it's counting with stones. In medicine, it's the mineral buildup in the body, kidney stones, tartar, on teeth. She teaches me all this as I sit there with my mouth open, looking astonished. A poem by Paul Hostovsky, The Calculus, from his collection Is That What That Is, published by Future Cycle Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.